What's up, peeps? I just want to showcase uh, something I've been having a lot of fun with lately, which is um, sort of a, a, a one, two, three punch uh, build, which is it. you have Dark Riders, Witch Elves, and Blackguard as the backbone of this build. And the idea is you use the, the Dark Riders to snare, to use the Witch Elves to pin, and then you use the Black Guard to cut things up. And I've had a lot of, uh, not only fun, but also success playing with this type of build on ladder. And I just wanted to give you a couple of examples of how the these types of battles have gone against different opponents and so on. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be a triple feature YouTube video where I showcase three battles and you can see sort of how that goes and another thing that i've had a lot of uh, fun and success with lately is just bringing a uh, cheap lord the supreme sorceress of death with spirit leech stripped down to just that and then uh yeah going wide so the the reason i like this stripped down lord is because she's pretty she's pretty cheap so it lets you go a little bit wider and then you can use the black guard and witch elves to protect her from any sort of melee and uh, so yeah Going over deployment here, what's my opponent have? He's got two archers, well, sorry, five archers, a lot of, three archers, four archers, two sea guard on the flanks. That's a good, that's a pretty standard deployment to see sea guard on the flanks. He did bring the fireborn, which is a very expensive unit of cav, and sisters of Avalorn in the back, spears, <coughs> and then uh, Teclis. So Teclis has got uh, Net of Amatok. Actually, he's got pretty much a full kit. That's so splurging on Teclis. I think you should, and if you are going to bring Teclis, my advice would be to strip him down. Honestly, all you need on Teclis, in my opinion, is probably Net of Amatok, maybe Regrowth and Heart of Troy. The rest is, is in my opinion, uh, superfluous. Another unit of Dragon Prince is on the flank, so I guess the Cav to interrupt, and he was going to rely on his shooting to kill me. I decided to bring two bolt throwers because I've seen this from a lot of high elf players as you go super wide with archers and then just try and obstruct. And if they don't bring it, uh, if they don't bring any bolt throwers of their own, you can kind of, um, yeah, force them to change their strategy and be the aggressor. I don't normally bring a lot of bolt throwers. I don't really like them, but against high elves, they do definitely seem to have a niche. Um, so this is an interesting map because it's got two sort of like pillars on both sides, which, uh, are a blessing and a curse. They're a blessing because they give you sort of a defensive anchor, but they're a curse because if anything comes around the side, right, I have no line of sight from my shooting. If I have both throwers set up in the middle and stuff goes around the flanks, I'm not going to be able to shoot it. So the cavalry, if they if they wrap around in this in this space here, I can't shoot the cavalry, which would be my number one choice of target with my both throwers. So let's that's enough theory uh, theory crafting or whatever for now. Let's go over the game. So I got four units of Harpies myself. I've got uh, one, two units of Dark Riders, and then three units of Witch Elves, three units of Black Guard, and those are going to have to work in tandem. So let's go maybe from the High Elf perspective. You can see it a little bit easier. I'm gonna fast forward just a tad here because I do want to get into the three matches. So initial shots going in at the Archers. I would probably want to switch to the uh, Sisters of Avalorn or the Cavalry when I have the chance. Now you'll notice on the far side the Fireborn have rotated around and I'm not going to waste any time with my Witch Elves. I'm going to try and get them into combat ASAP to cut up the spears and to potentially get into those that Archer backline because uh, I don't want them taking more damage than necessary from shooting. I will probably try and get, get in some quick charges here uh, for some spears that were not yet braced. And then I'm going to try and look to thread the gaps with anything I can. So Harpies are going to make their way into the back line. Teclis will try and interrupt, but I, I can uh, force path it through them if I, if I want to. So I don't, it looks like my bolt throwers are actually shooting in on some spearmen. Uh, probably not Opto, or maybe it's the White Lions. So a bit of a missed micro there, but I was obviously busy pressuring out these back lines. So Dragon Prince is a Fireborn. It looks like they've decided to pull back and try and secure their back line instead of coming around as they had initially planned to take out the bolt throwers. So 
Interesting that uh, he's decided to use them in a defensive manner. I should recognize this and pull my harpies out if I were smart, but I, I did have a couple units uh, breaking off here, and I just wanted to make sure that they were routing to just take some pressure off. So three units of archers have now routed. There is the Sisters of Avalorn who are going to put up a bit more of a fight versus the harpies, but they are mucked up a little bit, and there is one other unit of archers online. Meanwhile, the witches, without the archer support, have been free to cut up the spears, and that's opened up opportunities for me to push forward in the, in the center. There are no good targets for the Supreme Sorceress of Death, so I've just kept her in reserve with this unit of Black Guard to keep these two bolt these bolt throwers online. And you will see I switched the bolt throwers now to single shot, and they are going to be starting to chip away at the Fireborn, which are no longer protected by this uh, this rock formation and are exposed. So here's my one of my gambits. I do pin the Fireborn with the Dark Riders. It's likely that I will be sending in some witches or other things later on. Or maybe I'll just get in the free charge there. I mean, it's the, not the best place for the Dark Riders to be, but it is buying some freedom for the Harpies uh, to do some work here on the Archers and Sisters. So this other unit of Dragonborn has now been rampaged by the Witch Elves. And then, yeah, here's the here's the Witch Elf uh, Black Guard combo. My opponent wisely nets the Black Guard, so the Dragon Princes will be okay here. It looks like, it looks like they are taking a hit of Spirit Leech from the uh, Supreme Sorceress. Here come the Witch Elves. I think my opponent is just overwhelmed with all of the micro he has to do. Tried to pull back regrouped units, dealing with the Archer Harass, and this is absolutely going to probably cement the game for me. Pinning the, uh, the Fireborn with the Witch Elves, hitting him with the Black Guard, that is a fatal mistake. So I'm going to fast forward here. That's a like almost 2,000 gold unit that just gets uh, annihilated. And then at this point, I can pretty much uh, you know push out and uh, secure the victory. Black Guard are going to take out the Spears, and then chop, chop, chop for everything else. So, yeah, it was it was a fun game. Uh, Teclis is going to take a, a Desperation Charge here at my, my, my Supreme Sorceress, but she can Spirit Leech him down if necessary, and I just uh, chase everything else off the map. So that was a fun game. Let's hop into the second example. Uh, this time we have a Wood Elf opponent. Uh, let's see if I can find that one. I'll pull it up. Bum, 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 bum. I'm going to do Corsair. I'll show you a Corsair one later. Too. That was also fun. Okay, here's Wood Elf. So I tweak the build a little bit every time, depending on who I'm playing against or whatever I feel like at that particular moment. In this case, against the Wood Elf, I decided to go with Marathi. Uh, I like Marathi in the matchup against Wood Elves. Granted, she is very flimsy and can be just shot up, but she has access to Malakos, mystifying my asthma, which can be very, very helpful. And she also does have access to self heal. So if you notice you're being shot in a pitch, you can heal your Lord. So in this case, we're playing two Shifting Sands, so I can't sit back with bolt throwers. I've gone with one, two, three units of Dark Riders, four units of Dark Riders. I got my triple Witch Elf, triple Black Guard, and then the rest is uh, Spears, four units of Spears. I've deployed some at the front, some at the back, in case there was anything rear uh, in, in, in my rear. My opponent has Glade Riders with Hagebane tips. Those have the poison so they can debuff my speed and just be a nuisance. Then there's two units of treeman in the front line including the ancient treeman which is the lord choice he's bringing earth blood and regrowth there's the firebark treekin the firebark elders this unit is an amazing they can tank forever and they also have fire resist uh had i chosen to bring lower fire that could have been an issue in the front in the midline he's got two units of glade guard with starfire shafts flanked by spears all around and then on the far side he has a couple of wide wild riders which are unsupported by spears i think in general if you are going to bring cavalry it's always good to screen screen the cavalry with a unit of spears so that uh if i do counter with cavalry of my own you have something nearby to respond to it that said let's get in uh, let's get underway so initial uh engagement i do have my dark riders screening out the uh, Eternal Guard are going to chase them, but the Witch Elves and the uh, Dread Spears are going to counter charge. Dread Spears will chip away at the Tree Men with their anti large bonus, but the Tree Men obviously can smash back with his splash attacks. And, you know, Tree Men are definitely uh, at ease in the front line. But I do have Black Guard, and if I can get some Black Guard onto those Tree Men, that will definitely help my cause. So over here, you see the Wild Riders are flanking around, but I don't really have any shooting. So there's not a ton of great uh, options for them. It looks like their best option is the Dark Rider. They are going to get in a sneaky charge here. I will be counter charging and sending over a unit spears meanwhile over here witch elves and black guard are going to work on the ancient treeman along with marathi marathi does have an anti-large bonus and she's also going to debuff uh 
Did I bring... No, I didn't bring any of her fancy debuff stuff, so she's not going to be debuffing melee attack, but at least she is going to chip away at that ancient treatment, and that damage is adding up. Meanwhile, it looks like a unit of Witch Elves and Dark Riders have been able to slip the gap. That's going to punish these uh, Glagar with... Uh, with uh, Hage Bane tips and take them out of the fight. Murderous Prowess has popped uh, with the purple bar, so the, uh, the basically the melee attack is going to go up for all of my units. Fortunately, they're all engaged in combat, and uh, the Wild Riders here, the two units that were probably the biggest threat to me, have been pinned by the Dark Riders, Witch Elves, and the Spears, and they're unable to outrun the Dark Riders because they have a speed of, uh, what is it? Well, it's debuffed right now because of the effect of the Witch Elves, because Witch Elves debuff speed. But normally, I think it's around 80. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, 85, whereas my Dark Riders have a speed of 92. So they were not able to withdraw. They could not, like, basically kite out of there. Um, so really, yeah, all I have to do is just secure this, this frontline engagement. I did send a unit of Dark Riders to just annoy these, this, these Glade Riders with Hage Vane tips, but I do think the Glade Riders will probably be able to kill that unit because it's, it's quite depleted. But I was more concerned, I just sent them there to kind of keep them occupied. I was more concerned with the Wild Riders, making sure that they were escorted off of the field. This one did come back and rally. It will probably get in a rear charge here against my Witch Elves, but if my Witch Elves just turn around and rampage them, I have Spears nearby and I can take them Oh. Ancient Treeman has been chipped down by Marathi and the combined effect of the Black Art of Negron. So overall, I think my opponent just got really tied up here and he was not able to do the typical Wood Elf uh, kite and fight thing that you often see Wood Elves do. Now I will say a weakness of my build potentially would be anti-air shooting. In this game, I didn't uh, expect to see any Hawk Riders. So had my opponent brought Hawk Riders, they could have caused me a lot of problems. And actually I've since modified this build to uh, go uh, lighter on, let's say, the Dark Riders and the Witch Elves, and I tend to almost always bring at least one unit of Shades because it does give me that anti-air option, which is very uh, important for the um, for the Dark Elves. So uh, I will showcase one last match here, which again features this tactic. This one is against the High Elves. I've got, uh, uh, so I've got, you know, three Black Guard, three Witch Elves, my one unit of Shades. I've got my Dark Riders. This one, I, I snuck in an Assassin on both flanks because I thought it would be fun. And Assassins are great options for dealing with individual entities. And you often see that from High Elves, whether it be, uh, you know, Tyrion or uh, Flamespire Phoenix or things like that. I mean, granted, Assassins are best when targeting heroes, but if they can't get on a hero, I mean, they still have 350 weapon strength. They've got w missile damage and poison debuff. Uh, it can... It can cause problems for uh you know individual entities and especially if you can pin the individual entities with the witch elves then the combined effects of an assassin plus black art should be able to deal with pretty much any uh anything that they can put at you so in this one i'm going to be the aggressor i've got two units of dark riders screening up front i want them to be uh, at least initially trying to dodge some of the shots from this repeater bolt for So this is a common high elf tactic. You bring, actually this is probably the most common tactic on ladder period. You bring one piece of artillery and then you put a whole bunch of stuff around it to protect it. Uh, and it can be effective against dark elves if, if the dark elf player is not experienced. I think I, I've gotten better at it. I'm, I'm no, nowhere near perfect, but because I've seen it so many times, I, I, I feel more confident dealing with it. So basically, yeah, Dark Eagle Claw Bolthrower is taking initial shots on the Dark Riders, and you'll notice that because I have the Vanguard, I am able to dodge a lot of the shots. He, my opponent has recognized that he's not connecting with any of them, so he's switched targets, it seems. In this case, he's shooting it on Dread Spears, which is not the best, but uh, at least he is connecting. Okay, now he's switched again, and maybe he's trying to uh, hit the Black Guard? Or the Witch Elves, I, or my Lord, I'm not really sure what he's he's targeting right now, but uh, I think it's I think it's the Black Guard, but he has it on single shot. And okay, now he switched it to multi shot, and he's shooting in at the Shades. Meanwhile, I, I'm just still screening with my Dark Riders and uh, pushing up. So sooner or later, the front lines are going to engage. I'm going to fast forward just a teensy, weensy, weensy little bit here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shadow their, this is this is the important part, I'm going to shadow their cavalry with my Dark Riders because I, I'm relying on them on the pin. Once they get the pin, the Witch Elves and Dread Spears should be able to do the rest from there. 
So my opponent is shooting in on the Witch Elves. That's absolutely going to hurt. You got three units of archers chipping them down. Even though I have Dread Spears up in front, which are taking a few of the shots, it seems. I mean, they're still able, because of their bows, they can just shoot over top of the Dread Spear screen. And that's going right into the Witch Elves and, and definitely punishing them. But I do have a charge order issued. So a charge order... It's really important. If you notice, you see my morale bar is getting low there, right? If you if you take a look at it, uh, actually, did I lie? I, I lied. I have not issued the charge order yet, but I will be doing that soon, uh, as the um, as their uh, morale gets lower and lower, and the charge order will. Let's see here. Will buff. Uh, off to leadership yeah charging see plus 15 leadership for charging had they not been charging they would have uh they would have broke off and uh and fled the battle so it is important if you see something well they fled anyways because they got rear charts so much for that but that would have been the idea so i'm taking a lot of damage here balance bar is trying to get in the favor of my opponent this is quite normal for dark health players to be like losing at the beginning of the game especially against hiles because they have their uh defensive like uh, abilities, their defensive prowess. So the uh, Dragon Princes have gotten in here, Silverhounds have gotten in here, but this is a dangerous place. So Witch Elves rampage this unit of Silverhounds, Blackguard is right there. These Dragon Princes are still free to maneuver, but yeah, punishing. Meanwhile, the Canine Assassins are trying to make their way into the Princess and uh, take her out of the fight. I will be dropping some Spirit Leeches here. Swordmasters Hoeth are going to respond and try and prevent the advance, but I have my Dark... I have my uh, Shades over here. They're going to chip away at the Dark Shards with their Armor-Piercing Missiles. It's Sorry, at the Swordmasters, they're going to do a lot of damage. And over here, two units of cavalry have been pinned and locked up and taken out of the fight. That is very, very punishing for my opponent. Also here, this unit of Silverhounds, out of control. Speed debuff from the Witch Elves. Uh, and just taking a ton of damage. You, I cannot, uh, I cannot overstate like how good that uh, that Fury of Cain ability is. So, uh, where is it here? Which uh, wow, well, I'll, I'll look at it. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So minus 20% speed, minus 10% melee defense. I mean, that's that's really huge. You pin a unit of cavalry with, drop their melee defense, drop their speed, and then send some black art at them. They're going to be completely wrecked. So my opponent here has been desperate. They were they ran away with the princess and uh, basically tried to muck up my assassins with the archers. But with these archers uh, being used to screen out the assassins, that means that they're not shooting. I can move my spears around, get in some rear charges to break free of the assassins. And I'm going to continue to chase that, uh, that princess on foot uh, across the map. Meanwhile... The, the cavalry over here, the Dragon Princes, they've broken, they fled. There's the re there's the unit of Silverhound, but they're so tattered right now that they're pretty much not going to be a factor in the rest of the battle. This other, these other two units of cavalry have broken. Silverhelms over here. And then all I have really preventing me from securing the victory now is the unit of Spears and the unit of White Lions. And two units of White Lions. And I think the Black Guard should be able to take care of the White Lions, no problem. I know the White Lions do have armor pen. It's probably atricious for me. Uh, but the Black Guard are still very good. And they're just so flexible. You know, as long as they're fighting something and not getting shot, you're getting decent value out of them. Assassins are chasing off the princess. I'm going to fast forward at this point because you th I think you know how the battle's going. My opponent just decided to surrender at this point because he knew he, knew he had nothing left. So that's uh, three battles where I've showcased the potential of the Witch Elf, uh, Black Guard, and Dark Rider combination. This is on ladder match. Uh, so something to consider if you want to be a Dark Elf player and you want to run uh, a fun competitive build. It's it's underused and it's it's very, very powerful. Take care.